In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Today at this Mass, we remember Jody Hessling, and today we celebrate the feast day of St. Ephraim, a deacon and a doctor of the church. So he lived in the fourth century um, in the Middle East area, and he was known in particular for being a very erudite writer, a composer of poetry, um, a, uh, a great theologian whose writings contributed to the early days of the church. So recognized certainly as a doctor of the church as well. Let us call upon his intercession and celebrate these sacred mysteries by first acknowledging our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pour into our hearts, O Lord, we pray, the Holy Spirit, at whose prompting the deacon, St. Ephraim, exalted in singing, of your in singing of your mysteries, and from whom he received the strength to serve you alone. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah said to Ahab, Go up and eat and drink, for there is the sound of heavy rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, while Elijah climbed to the top of Carmel, crouched down to the earth, and put his head between his knees. Climb up and look out to sea, he directed his servant, who went up and looked, but reported, There is nothing. Seven times he said, go, look again. And the seventh time the youth reported, there is a cloud as small as a man's hand rising from the sea. Elijah said, go and say to Ahab, harness up and leave the mountain before the rain stops you. In a trice, the sky grew dark with clouds and wind and a heavy rain fell. Ahab mounted his chariot and made for Jezreel. But the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, who girded up his clothing and ran before Ahab as far as the approaches to Jezreel. The word of the Lord. God. It is right to praise you in Zion, O God. It is right to praise you in Zion, O God. You have visited the land and watered it. Greatly have you enriched it. God's water courses are filled. You have prepared the grain. It is right to praise you in Zion, O God. Thus have you prepared the land, drenching its furrows, breaking up its clods, softening it with showers, blessing its yield. It is right to praise you in Zion, O God. You have crowned the year with your bounty, and your paths overflow with a rich harvest. The untilled meadows overflow with it, and rejoicing clothes the hills. It is right to praise you in Zion, O God. give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Hallelujah. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it is said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Rah, will be answerable to the Sanhedrin. And whoever says, You fool, will be liable to fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gifts to the altar, and there recall that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there at the altar, and go first and be reconciled with your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court with him. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge, and the judge will hand you over to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you. You will not be released until you have paid the last penny. The Gospel of the Lord. As I meditated on the gospel, I couldn't help but be drawn to Jesus' words in the acclamation, I give you a new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. If the feast day of Mary had not fallen on Monday, the first gospel we would have read in the 10th week of ordinary time would have been the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount when Jesus, proclaiming the kingdom of God, gave us the Beatitudes. As part of Jesus' teaching on the Beatitudes, Tuesday, we heard that we were the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Yesterday, we were reminded our lives should be guided by God's law and what the prophets taught. Today, Jesus speaks to us concerning anger, how fitting that Mother Church would preface that part of the Sermon on the Mount with such fitting words, love one another as I have loved you. Jesus gives us a very stern warning about anger. He said, anger toward another could lead to punishment by law and worst yet, punishment by the judgment of God. Jesus tells us, Anger is such a grievous offense that if we bring our gifts to the altar and the Holy Spirit reminds us of a grievance we have with another, we should leave our gifts, go be reconciled with them, and then come back and offer our gift. Jesus is telling us anger with another is a grave sin which can separate us from each other and from our good God. When we are angry, we cannot fully be open to the love, grace, and mercy God wants to give us. We cannot be fully merciful to others. I thought about the times when I was angry with others and what caused me to hold on to that anger. It comes down to one word, humility or the lack thereof. Thinking I was a better judge of the offending party than our good God was. Bishop Fulton Sheen had this to say about anger in his book, Victory Over Vice. And this was summarized by Father Richard Collin. Fulton Sheen cautions us. Sinful anger is excessive, revengeful, and enduring. Sheen goes on to say, Our blessed Lord came to make reparation for our sin of anger, first by telling us to forgive and love our enemies, and next by actually practicing forgiveness and love for his enemies. 
The perfect reparation for anger was made on Calvary when Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Jesus was pleading ignorance on their behalf. He concludes, if during life we forgive others with our heart, on Judgment Day, the all-wise God will permit something very unusual for himself. He will forget how to add and know only how to subtract. He who has a memory from all eternity will no longer remember our sins. Thus, we will be saved once again through divine ignorance. So let us take Jesus' words to heart when he tells us, Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there recall that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there at the altar. First go and be reconciled with your brother and then come and offer your gift. Remembering how Father Stark used to end all the intentions with this prayer, he would say, let us pray for someone we love. Let us pray for someone we find difficult to love. Let us pray for someone who has asked us to pray for them. And finally, let us pray for someone who has no one but us to pray for them. Father once told me, it is hard to be angry with someone when we are praying for them. Today's Mass is being offered for my sister-in-law, Jody Hessling. My wife, Kathy, and I were very close to our sister-in-law, Jody, and her brother, Joe. Jody was called home four months ago. She was afflicted with the same illness that Father Stark had. On behalf of our family and myself, I want to thank you for being here today and praying for her. May you know Jesus' love today and share it with others always. Let us stand to present our prayers and petitions. <clears throat> we pray for the Holy Catholic Church and the holy people of God and for the grace of forgiveness. We pray to the Lord. Lord for peace and tranquility throughout our nation and throughout our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for a desire to turn toward the Lord in love for him to, and to turn away from sin and from vice, we pray to the Lord. Lord for an increase in vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life and the success of a man's days, we pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for all the faithful departed that they may rest in peace, especially the deceased members of the Hessling family for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord for the protection of our religious liberties, we pray. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the heavenly host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, hear and answer these prayers that we make in faith, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, <clears throat> for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, and will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice which we gladly present on the feast day of St. Ephraim be pleasing to you, O God, for taught by him we too give ourselves entirely to you in praise, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are praised in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits you crown your own gifts. By their way of life you offer us an example. By communion with them you give us companionship. By their intercession, sure support so that encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. And so with angels and archangels and with the great multitude of saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Ephraim, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis our Pope, and Louis our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Through Christ the Teacher, O Lord, instruct those you feed with Christ the Living Bread, that on the feast day of St. Ephraim we may learn your truth and express it in works of charity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We honor Mary as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.